All right. Well, thank you, everybody, once again. Um, so this webinar is going to be an end-of-year letter hackathon, and our presenters today come, from a, come to us from Sea Change Strategies. This is the second of three webinars um, in a series that Sea Change is doing with a partnership in order to help uh, you know, amplify your fundraising efforts. Today's webinar will focus on end-of-year copy, and in particular, we'll uh, see our, our presenters review actual letters that have been submitted by partnership members. So this will be really exciting, and you can see some do's and don'ts of um, how to structure your own letters. So our presenters are uh, Mark Rovner, who is a principal at Sea Change Strategies, and Aliyah McKee, who is also principal at Sea Change Strategies. And I'm really excited about the webinar that we have ahead of us. So Mark and Aliyah, you want to take it away? Sounds great. Yep. Mark, you there? Good afternoon. I am here. Um, we are, I want to start out by teaching everyone a Yiddish word, um, which is kvel, K-V-E-L-L, -L, and that is a Yiddish word that means to heap fulsome praise on something. And <laughs> we're going to look at some of your letters, and we've already peaked, and none of them are um, below good, so we don't need to worry about whether it's dolphin tank or shark tank. Um, but we're going to start out by letting Aliyah Cavell on a letter that um, she particularly liked. And do I have control? Oh, I have to grab control. Okay, I'm grabbing control. Share warning. Whoa, it did something weird, Polani. Um, okay, I'm sorry. That's the bar that will let you take it back. Um, I'm sorry, everybody, to folks online. We're having just a bit of technical difficulties. Um, why don't you push that green, that green arrow, Mark? The green arrow. Okay. And then push the share button again. When you were sharing, hit OK. Oh, there we go. Um, can you all see a big number six, Polani? I can. Yep, yep, it's right. <laughs> Excellent. We're back in business. Uh, I'm going to start. We're back to Kvel. And here is the letter <laughs> that Leah wants to Kvel over. Fantastic. So I'm going to give folks a little heads up. Um, Michelle from um, NC Child um, gave us permission to use this letter. And um, she has been participating in our one-on-one um, -on -one calls. And she actually made them one-on-three -on -three calls. And she brought on her copywriter and her designer and herself um, to take a look at the concept that they were coming up with for their end-of-year campaign. And they really wanted to sort of um, hone in on this idea of be the voice. And they wanted to talk about how people in North Carolina could be the voice for all of the beneficiaries that NC Child advocates for. Um, so this is an example of be the voice for medically fragile children. Um, and they have a variety of these that are going to be launching both online and offline throughout the, um, the year-end season. Now, when she and I first talked, um, they actually were um, talking all about their successes. And all of the photos that they had been using were really um, positive with lots of happy children smiling, which is wonderful to do when you are um, thanking a donor. It's not necessarily the best thing to do when you are um, asking for donations, right? When you're asking for donations, you're wanting to really focus attention on need and why it is that you need the money. Because if you talk about a success story um, in a very positive light when you're asking for money, your donor already thinks you have it all in the bag. So why are they going to have to give to you anyway? So I'm going to stop talking, and I'm just going to read um, the first few paragraphs of this um, online letter. So we've got Rob who's getting this message. We're grateful that you're part of our network of North Carolinians dedicated to ensuring children grow up happy, healthy, and safe. Now we want to earn your financial support. 
In the coming weeks, we're going to share some stories with you about the incredible impact of NC Child's advocacy, which is only possible with support from people like you. Please take a moment to read Talon's story and consider supporting NC Child. Talon Gerdonis is a little girl from Elizabeth City, North Carolina, who was born with Boring Opitz Syndrome, an extremely rare congenital disorder that affects everything from the brain to the skeleton to the skin. Kayla needs around-the-clock care and special equipment to stay alive and comfortable in her home with her family. The Gerdonis family struggled to manage the extreme financial demands of caring for Talon until they found the Community Alternatives Program for Children. Um, CAPT-C provides in-home skilled nursing care as well as life-saving equipment and other medically necessary services, none of which is covered by their private insurance plan. As a result of the advocacy of NC Child and our key partners, 1,200 additional children like Kaylin have access to this critical program. This victory for special needs children is only possible when North Carolinians take action to put children first. As we approach the holiday season, we hope you'll consider supporting NC Child. Thanks for all you do. So this is what I really love about this appeal. Um, I love how it focuses on the story of one little girl, right, and really makes um, the story about her and her family's struggle. Um, I like that they bring in this significant saga that she's not the only child like this, right? 1,200 additional children like Taylor have access to the critical program, and you get a sense of how important it is um, that, you know, children with special needs in North Carolina um, have resources like NC Child advocating for them. Um, I also love that at the beginning they acknowledge that the person is part of the network of North Carolinians dedicated to ensuring children grow up happy, healthy, and safe, but that they haven't yet given yet, right? That's a really nice thing. This is only going to people who have not yet supported NC Child. So it's nice that they say, now we want to earn your financial support. Um, what I might do um, differently on this, and Michelle knows this, is um, the design on this is a little difficult to read. So as, if you're looking at this on a screen and you see Be the Voice for Medically Fragile Children, that font choice is a little difficult to read. And you have to remember that your donors are um, going to be probably um, above the age of 50, um, for the most part, um, and you really need to be very um, easy on the eyes so that way they can read it. I also would probably talk a little bit more about other families who still haven't had access to this, um, to this program, um, so that way there's a little bit more urgency to, um, you know, Taylor is one of the success stories, but there are thousands more children like her who are still struggling to get the health care they need. Um, so that's probably, those are my two biggest points. I'd probably make it a little bit more urgent um, and make the um, font treatment a little easier on the eyes. Mark, do you have anything that you'd add here? No. I, the only, the, the things that I look for and will be looking for in the letters that we go into is um, that it be heartfelt and the story makes it heartfelt. Um, if you are sending it to a prior donor, acknowledging that they're a prior donor, reminding them why you exist, and clearly asking for money. And because this isn't going to prior donors, um, I, I agree with you, Aaliyah, that the way they said you're, you're part of the family already um, covers that base. So I think, it, I think it checks every box. Some of the letters we're going to look at don't have stories, and that's okay. And by the way, Aliyah and I don't always agree, partly because a lot of these, um, a lot of the guidance is somewhat subjective. As long as you check those boxes, the letter's probably okay. We usually agree. We usually agree, but not always. So it's good to point <laughs> yeah. But remember <laughs> last week's rule, Aliyah is right if we disagree. No. I live by that. All right, let's launch into it, and I'm going to show the first of the four letters that have been subjected. This one is from Voices for Illinois Children, and Voices, are you on? 
Kalani or Aaliyah, if you can let me know if someone is. Oh, um, Jeanette says she is, yes. Yeah. Jeanette is on. Okay, great. Hi, Jeanette. Welcome. Um, great job. I'm going to read the first um, couple paragraphs. This is, this is a somewhat longer letter, as you can see, um, which is also okay. We'll talk about that in a second. And then tell you what I'm seeing, and then Aaliyah, um, you'll chime in, and then you'll start on the next one. Sound good? Sounds great. All right. Your first name. Throughout 2017, I found myself asking, who's looking out for our kids? I joined Voices for Illinois Children as president last year because I care deeply about the state's children. This past year, hearing the stories of abused and neglected children broke my heart. I was mad that Illinois operated for over two years without a budget. I felt dismayed as leaders in Washington tried time and time again to take away health insurance from vulnerable children and families. All around, it felt like children's well-being was less important than scoring political points or holding on to grudges. When I grew frustrated, I reminded myself of what drove Voices founders to make children a priority among policymakers in Illinois. 30 years later, Voices remains committed to our founders' vision and works every day so that children in our state can grow up healthy, happy, and safe. As a past supporter of Voices, you understand the challenges we are up against. Too many children in Illinois live in poverty. Too many teens are graduating high school, not ready for college or a career. Sorry about the dog. In many parts of the state, working parents are forced to choose between taking care of a sick child and losing a day's worth of wages. Social service providers are still waiting on payments promised to them by the state. I'm going to stop reading there and just show you the rest of the letter. It's very strong, and the language is really strong. Uh, It gets into what will happen with your money, the the kinds of outcomes. Um, You talk about meeting people throughout the state, um, and then you close. The VLC member's dedication inspires me to keep fighting for our children, but we can't succeed without your support. Voices goals are big. And we'll take time to be will take time to be achieved. Typo. By donating to Voices today, you are helping to ensure another generation of children and families in Illinois has an advocate on their side who believes every child deserves an equal opportunity to succeed in life. Thank you for your past generosity to Voices for Illinois Children. I hope you consider investing in Voices valuable work again this year. So just to pull the focus back, um, is it emotional? Yes. Your heartfelt feelings convey, convey that emotion well. Um, does it remind them that they are donors? Yes, but it's in the third paragraph. And I'd love to see acknowledgement that they're a past supporter in the first or the second paragraph. Um, is there a clear ask? There is, but again, I would like to see the ask come way up. Um, into the second paragraph. I think the letter gets particularly strong with this paragraph as a past supporter of voices who understand the challenges. That's a really powerful paragraph. And I wonder if shortening the the paragraphs that lead up to that wouldn't make things tighter and and sneaking an ask in before you before you give that litany of problems. I think that's all I would do. I really like this letter. Aaliyah? Yeah, this is actually a, a, a place where Mark and I are going to disagree, not in the fact that I don't like this letter. I love this letter, but I wouldn't um, cut anything from the first couple of paragraphs. Um, Jeanette, I think I feel your frustration in this letter, and I, I just think this, the, um, the second paragraph, I joined Voices for Illinois Children, because I care deeply about the state's children. And just you really channel the frustration that all of us are feeling, but you give us a direction that we can, like, channel that anger, right? We can, we can help by giving to you. And I just I feel like that, those, those two paragraphs are just super strong. Um, and it also made me feel like I got to know you. And this is something we talked about at the um, workshop that we did in June. Remember, you are a protagonist in the story. 
And I think that Jeanette just did a fantastic job of, um, of making herself um, a, a, a protagonist. Um, a question just came in from Terry Haven. Is the second letter too long? How long is too long? So this is a great question. Um, this is a mailed letter, and I believe it's just two pages. Am I right on that, Mark? Yes, it's two pages. Oh. Okay, I think two pages for a mailed letter is A-OK. -okay. I really love that um, it drills down into what your support will do. Mark, will you scroll so I can see some of those bullets, please? So your support, every child is given the opportunity to receive a quality early learning experience. Children enter school ready to learn and free from hunger, stress, and trauma. Right, you know, it's, it's very specific around what you can do, so I definitely wouldn't delete that. Um, I think everything in this letter belongs in this letter. Um, as far as this email letter, um, it, it, again, the length of the letter depends on, um, on you know, the, the quality of the story. I've seen some emails be 250 words, which is on the shorter side, um, and really do extraordinarily well. Um, but I've also seen emails that have been long because they have a story that have gone to be more like 500 words that also do very well. So as you're writing your emails, remember, try to be brief. Try to go on the short side. But if you have a really compelling story about how your work um, changed a child's life or how your work will change a child's life, um, then definitely, you know, don't, don't edit it down just because Aaliyah said that you need to be at 250 words. Um, what else do I love about this? Oh, so, oh, yes, so I would agree with Mark to bring the ask up. And I think you could do that between the, um, you know, between the second and third paragraph. Um, and really, I think that's, that's what I would do. Mark, can you scroll down one second? You didn't read the quote on the second page, and I didn't get a chance to see it. So there's a quote, I joined the DLC because I wanted to be a voice for the community in addressing the disparities that affect the lives of Austin residents. Um, yeah, I think that that's nice how that's called out there. I mean, I get to sit and hear their concerns. Yeah, I love that. I think this is a really strong letter. Oh, the other thing I would say before we move on is make sure that you remember the time of year that you're going to be mailing is a very busy mail time. So you might want to think about what is on the outside of your envelope to get people to open the letter, right? So, you know, you can be provocative um, or you can, um, you know, uh, ask, you know, for, for urgency, you'll sometimes do something, you know, urgent, um, you know, please make your, you know, year-end contribution or urgent children in Illinois need you or something like that to get people to open up the, the letter. Um, Jeanette uh, wrote in and said, thanks for all the good feedback and nice things said. One question I have is the design. I don't have an in-house designer. With the bolding colors and text box, is this enough design? I think so. I don't think you have to go crazy with, you know, with special design as long as the heart is there um, and the emotion is there. So I'm, I'm fine with this. But again, I would go a Jeanette, step further. Oh, go ahead. I would go a step further and say low design is probably stronger. Something that looks like a brochure and we'll see one doesn't feel like a personal letter to me. Yeah. But the only thing I would add to that is, um, yeah, it will be on her letterhead too. That's great. Is think about um, what's on the outside of that envelope. Um, and that doesn't have to be highly designed, but just some kind of um, writing that's just like, you know, please, you know, open before December 31st or something that gets people's attention. Um, Helen Smith has, should you use regular stationery which lists board members on the side? Um, I think that that's great, particularly if your board members are prominent um, folks that people will um, recognize, um, then I think that's, that's great. Mark, do you disagree? No, I would, I would just, I would make this as close to a personal letter as possible. If that's a stationery you usually use, that's a stationery you should use here. Yeah. Unless someone everyone hates is on the board. 
<laughs> Great. And Should we thank move you on? For that so much. Yeah, let's move on. Jeanette, thank you for letting us um, uh, pick on you a little bit. We appreciate it. Great start. Great start. All right, I'm going to make this letter go away. We're going to go back to Microsoft Word. And this one is from New Jersey. Oh, um, fantastic. Fantastic. So, is that? Oh, go ahead, Mark. No, I was going to ask if New Jersey's in the room. Is New Jersey in the room? Okay, Mary's there. Hi, Mary. It's good to hey, have Mary. you on the call. All and right. You, you want to so do the I honors? Yeah, I'm going to take the first um, crack at this one. And, again, I'm going to read it aloud, um, not to bore you guys, but just so that way um, we're all on the same page, literally. Um, all right. So the election results are in. New Jersey has a new governor and new legislature. Now the real work for our children begins. You can continue to make a difference for New Jersey kids. Because of you, $25 million was included in the state budget to expand preschool in 26 districts to more of New Jersey's three- and four-year-olds. Because of the school breakfast campaign, 105,000 more children are eating breakfast in school so they start the day ready to learn. And school meal programs bring more federal dollars to New Jersey. But there is more work to be done. Nearly 302,000 children from low-income households are not eating breakfast at school. A considerable challenge is looming on the horizon involving New Jersey child care centers. Each year, the state provides financial assistance in the form of subsidy, subsidies to help pay for child care for approximately 80,000 children from low-income families, enabling parents to participate in the workforce. The legislature has not increased the subsidy for infant care since 2008. Today's infant care subsidy is the same 32.12 a day established nearly a decade ago, but now that barely covers the cost of keeping the doors open, like staffing, supplies, rent, and utilities, and it leaves nothing to cover repairs, let alone invest in quality improvements like facilities, upgrades, and staff training. The shortfall has driven up turnover and begun to deter undermine the ability of centers to meet critical safety and care standards. Okay, I'm going to stop there. So I love the way that this um, letter starts, right? The election results are in. We have a new governor. We have a new legislature. Okay, we're tabla rasa. But now the real work for our children begins, right? Um, I, on the second paragraph, Mary, this is the good news, and that's wonderful, but that should be in a different message. That should be in a cultivation message that goes out um, separate from this appeal. Because really what you want to do is say the real work starts now, and then you take a whole huge paragraph and, and take a look back, right? So I would cut paragraph two, not because it's not worth bragging about, but because it belongs in a different touch point. It belongs in a cultivation. Um, I love a considerable challenge is looming on the horizon involving New Jersey. Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Except I, I, I threw out the baby with the bathwater on paragraph two. Um, the 302,000 children who are not eating breakfast at school, um, you know, that could, you know, definitely be in this message because, um, because it's, a, it's, it's an important um, point for why people need to support you. Now, um, Mark, you've read this whole letter. Does the, re does the remainder of the letter um, talk about the um, – I'm sorry, can you scroll up? Does the remainder of the letter talk about the child care centers? The remainder of the letter goes a little more into the child care centers with, with a couple of paragraphs and then – talks about this campaign we deliver for New Jersey children. Okay, um, great. Great. So, so let's, let's scroll up. That gives me a little more context. I appreciate that. So, Mary, what I'm seeing here is that um, I, I really like that then you focus in on child care centers as a, as, a, as a story, but I did get confused with all of the statistics. So, 
really think about what statistics you want to throw out there. And this might be a moot point because paragraph two had a ton of statistics in it, and once you take that out, it won't feel as statistic heavy. But while I was reading it aloud, I was having trouble keeping track. Um, I felt like I was having to do some math problems. And that's the last thing that you want um, someone to have to do is, like, have to, like, think through math um, to try to figure out, you know, what is the story that you're trying to tell them. So that's one thing I would say is, you know, make sure that, that you're not relying too much on statistics. And then um, scroll down, Mark, please. Right. Then I just make sure that you really do connect um, the child care centers issue with the campaign goal. Since you've led with that as your main story, just make sure that, um, that that's, you know, part of your campaign goal. By donating today, you can also help to I make sure that there's something about child care centers in those bullets um, to, to, you know, make that sort of become more cohesive. Mark, I'm curious about your additions here. Um, I agree with everything you said. I would be really tempted to get those paragraphs partner with ACNJ as we proudly launch in the campaign goal way up, way, way, way up, um, even before I get too deep into the child care story, because that's the ask, um, and, and you want the ask as high as possible. Also, the one piece, of that paragraph Aaliyah flagged, which I agree with her, um, because of you, that's something that all of you should be looking for an opportunity to put in the letter. Um, it's an easy clause to put in, and it, it gets the all-important you into it, um, but, but you don't need the you – can, you can attach that to almost anything. So that's my only thought is to move the ask way up. Yeah. So I like something like, I agree with you, Mark. The election results are in. You know, you can continue to make a difference for New Jersey kids. Scroll down, Mark. You know, a part, a partner with ACNJ, you know, as we proudly launch our We Deliver for New Jersey Children campaign, right? Because together we can deliver accessible, quality, and safe child care that can serve families throughout the state. Something like that. And then you can come in and say, the threats are real. You know, this is what we're fighting up against. For example, you know, this is, you know, the child care centers and, you know, the issues that we're having there. And then you can circle back into, okay, our campaign goal is to raise 150000 by December 31st, yada, yada, yada. And Don't again, be afraid to put – oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, I say the same thing about the envelope. Think about what's going to get people to open this. Great advice. And, and the equivalent of the envelope in an email, of course, is the subject line. Subject line. Um, don't be afraid to ask twice in a letter, even a two-page letter. Um, one advantage of moving this ask, moving these couple paragraphs up, is that may be all they need to see. If they're a current donor, and they know you, and, and you've acknowledged them as a donor, and there's the ask, they may not need or want to read on. They may just be ready to check the boxes, um, hopefully joining the champion circle, write their check, and be done with it. Otherwise, great yeah. job. And before we move on, and I know we need to, I do want to say the last two messages had two very different leads, right? The first one from Jeanette in Illinois was, hey, you know, it was, it was very personal. And she was like, you know, I've been wondering where, you know, who is the voice for America's children, right? And so it, 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 was, it, draw, it drew me in because I was like, I connect with this woman. I feel the same way she does. I'm there. This one connected with me because I felt this urgency. I felt this immediacy, right? The election results are in. New Jersey has a new governor and a new legislature. Okay, so what does that mean? Why? That'll get me reading because I feel like this is an opportunity, right? So as you're thinking about your leads, 
think about what is it that's going to get my reader one more paragraph in, right? Because once they start reading the first paragraph and they stick around, they're probably going to read through most of the, most of the letter. And just for the record, I think you're right on the first letter. I am persuaded oh, about, about leaving those first two paragraphs in. <laughs> All right, Jeanette, definitely listen to that because I love those paragraphs. Don't cut them. Don't cut them. She's right. She's right. <laughs> All right. Next one up. All right, next one up, I will read, uh, and it is from dun, 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 the Schuyler Center. Um, and, I, and I really, uh, here's the letterhead. Looks like a personal letter. Um, Dear Salutation, we can't and have never been able to do it without you. It began in 1872 when Alexander Hamilton's great-granddaughter, Louisa Lee Schuyler brought groups of ordinary citizens together to combat the horrid conditions in New York's poor houses and has continued nonstop to 2017 when together we defeated the most devastating congressional proposals to cut Medicaid. Your compassion and your financial resources have allowed us to shine the light on one of Louisa Lee's fundamental principles that state government can and must be made to work for children and families. We need your financial support now as much as ever. Story here. At the Schuyler Center, we are fighting worthwhile fights on multiple fronts simultaneously. Here are a few examples. Congress has yet to authorize funding for the Children's Health Insurance Program, and New York State has said it will run out of money in early 2018 for the 344,000 New York children covered by this program. We cannot let this happen. Your donation will support our staff working tirelessly with New York's congressional delegation to authorize CHIP funding for several years. As medical and behavioral research demonstrates in study after study, the first three years of a child's life have lifelong consequences, medical, financial, and behavioral. Your donations have supported Schuyler being at the forefront of this work in New York State pushing for better systems of care for children covered by Medicaid. This has led to a new initiative by the Medicaid program called the First Thousand Days, which will focus on those crucial first three years of life. I have been invited to lead this incredible initiative. Your role in supporting this work is vital. Important policy and advocacy work for those living in poverty does not always get foundation funding. Certainly the direct discussions and visits with our elected officials don't. And often we find ourselves vying for legislators' attention with denizens of well-resourced professional lobbyists, firms, individuals paid by large institutions and wealthy individuals. Your donations give us the flexibility and time to build relationships and address policy matters in unique and creative ways. Louisa's fight in 1872, her Citizens' Brigade fights in the late 1800s, the fights fought for those living in poverty and disadvantaged by life's insecurities over the subsequent 150 years and the fight Schuyler Center takes on today are all incredibly challenging. They have been fought by a well-respected, ever-independent Schuyler Center. We can only maintain and build on that independent voice with your help. Please give today. Your generous gift to the Schuyler Center will ensure New York's public policies benefit everyone, not just those with money and power. Thank you in advance for your support. P.S. Did you know that over 30% of births in New York State did not receive adequate prenatal care? All right. There's so much I love about this letter. I, this is yet another way of, of opening the, the conversation by placing the donor and placing the Schuyler Center in this arc of history I think is extraordinarily powerful. You're not just doing one thing in one moment. You're part of this longer-term effort and that comes through loud and clear. The only thing I would do with that first paragraph is that first sentence is a, a very long. You have a couple of really beautifully written, but maybe two long sentences that would be more powerful if they were cut in half. Um, don't cut anything out of them, just make them into two sentences. You've got the ask right after that inspiring lead. Um, you've got two reasonable examples without too much 
um, without too many statistics, which is, which is an important thing. I wonder, because you've been invited to lead that first 1,000 Days initiative, if it shouldn't go first. I felt like that was a big reveal mm -hmm. and, and might have wanted to see it up a little higher. Um, you've, done an, you've done a really good job of placing the donor in the story. And you do it again and again and again, and that repetition matters. We can and we have never been able to do it without you. We need your support. Your role in supporting this work is vital. I liked this explanation. It made perfect sense to me that, that you're asking the donor to give you funds that you wouldn't otherwise have access to and be able to do things you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do. Again, the repeated ask is great. Repeated thank you is great. I would say no stories. I think this letter is as long as it needs to be to get the job done. And other than making sure that sentences don't require two breaths to read out loud, um, I wouldn't change much. Aliyah, how about you? Uh, man, I echo what Mark said, Helen. Um, you, I loved that first paragraph. Um, I, I would agree with Mark that the sentences could be shorter. Um, people are now used to reading like online copy, which tends to be very short and, and brief. So just think about shortening the, the sentences. Again, don't cut out any of the content. Just make them shorter. And then I'd also break up your paragraphs. They're a little um, thick. And even though they probably are exactly how, um, you know, the MLS would want you to um, – is it MLS or APA? Um, MLA. Either way. MLA, yeah. If the MLA is APA, it's probably A-OK -okay according to them, but you might want to break up those paragraphs a little bit so people can skim. I love the origin story. And, guys, this is something that a lot of you could take advantage of. I mean, you might not have Alexander Hamilton, <laughs> um, but you, um, you, know, you might have something else that's quite um, provocative and intriguing. And think about your origin story. What was the founding story? Why do you exist? And you can always tell it. Um, I loved the idea of how important policy and advocacy work doesn't always get foundation funding. I think this is something that a lot of you on the call could steal. Um, it's important to show people that, no, you think that we're funded by foundations, but there's a lot of things that we need unrestricted support to do, and I think this letter does a beautiful job. Um, yes. Yeah. Helen, I think your paragraphs are too long. She just um, texted in wondering. Um, I, I think um, you, know, you, could, you could basically chop up um, most of them. The second paragraph is about rights, right, as far as how you want things to look. And maybe that first bullet is, um, is okay, but I'd, I'd make sure that you're, you're cutting up your paragraphs a little bit more. And I agree with Mark. I don't think you need a specific story here. I think you already did it. Your founding story is your story. I love it. And I agree with everything she said. I mm -hmm. might go through it once and look to trim here and there. For example, the second bullet is medical and behavioral research demonstrates in study after study. Do you really need that clause? Because if you open up, the first three years of a child's life have lifelong consequences. It's a stronger sentence. And I'm not sure anyone's going to quibble with it. Um, there may be little spots in here where you can trim. And just to amplify something Leah said, and this is important for all of you, English teachers will hate good fundraising copy. The paragraphs will be short. There will be passive voice. There will be fragments. There may even be cliches. And, and that is okay because the purpose of this is not to get an A in English. The purpose of this is to get someone to write a check. So, so worry a little bit less about, about perfect um, college rhetoric and comp style um, and, and think about delivering the message. Yeah. Any questions before come we, in? Before we move on, I just also want to mention the PS. I love that PS. And this is me, the person who was saying, be careful of going overboard with statistics. But this is, you know, it's just a little PS. And I live in New York State, and this was shocking to me, that 30% of births had inadequate prenatal care. 
So, you know, you can use statistics, but, you know, use them in a, in a moment where it's very clear that that is a shocking statistic and people should be upset about it. And by the way, spell out New York State everywhere. That would, that would be my little tiny net. All right. We are going to move on to, oh, the last one is in a different format. It's in Adobe Acrobat. Take it away, Aaliyah. Okay, fantastic. So um, the beginning, um, so how are the children doing? The children's agenda makes a difference for kids, but ultimately your support has helped shape the answer to that question. Dear Janet and Dave, thank you for supporting the children's agenda with your past gift of $500. This year, working together with many partners, the children's agenda was instrumental in passing historic Raise the Age legislation. Like so many others, we were touched by the story of Khalif Broder, a 16-year-old who was arrested for allegedly stealing a backpack. Khalif always maintained his innocence and spent three years at Rikers Island with adult inmates, 800 days of which were spent in solitary confinement. He was regularly starved and physically assaulted by inmates and guards. Charges brought against Khalif were eventually dropped and he was released, but he suffered from depression and two years later he committed suicide. On April 8th, in response to this tragedy and with our support, New York State passed the strongest measure to raise the age. The difference it will make is substantial. It will break the school to prison pipeline. Then there's this quote, it's easier to build strong children than to prepare, repair broken men, Frederick Douglass. We need your help to make this happen. Please give now using the attached envelope or click the donate button at the uh, website. Sincerely. And is there a PS mark? Uh, yep. Sincerely, Larry Mark. And then you've got the children's agenda. And I think is the second page the same one, only just um, to a different group? Yes. Fantastic. And then, guys, you'll see in the purple um, box here, there is um, some statistics which is, um, this is an interesting way to do it, right? So that way if your, your um, letter copy isn't super statistic heavy, that if people want to get, you know, the rational brain and working, it, 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 you know, has this nice sidebar that sort of shows them that. Um, I'm going to tell you what I love about this letter. What a story. Um, you know, it, it and, and, Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I tend to ramble a little bit because I get very excited about this. Um, the, we'll start. We'll, we'll go linearly. So the first thing um, I really like is that there's the acknowledgement that someone has given, and it tells them how much they've given, right? So right there, you anchor it. So most people are not going to want to um, give less than that amount. So great job, Rachel. I think you're on this group, on this, on this call, and I appreciate you being here. That's a fantastic way to anchor your ask. Um, at the top, how are the children doing? The children's agenda makes a difference for kids, but ultimately your support has helped shape the answer to that question. I, I love that you're making the donor um, uh, upfront about it, but there's something that confused me about, about that that. that sentence structure, and it's so important because it's the first thing people have read, I might try to pull something up about Khalif's story, um, you know, just something about, um, it, it, you know, donate and help, um, or, or maybe that's where you put the um, Frederick Douglass quote, Mark, if you can scroll down, because that kind of um, dog whistles the... Um, the uh, the um, the story that you're about to to tell. It's easier to build strong children than to repair broken men. Um, so I, I might do something that's a little bit more just in your face in that in that um, you know top section in the orange. Um, and I really liked how you do have the statistics there, but they're in a sidebar, so I can just take a look at that. Mark, as I'm thinking, what else would you add here? Um, I would make it clear in that first paragraph, I agree with you about that anchoring. I thought that was a good call. I would make it clear that you're asking for support again because the ask doesn't really come 
until the very last paragraph at this point. Um, and, and I, when I started reading this, I thought it was a thank you letter. Also, I'm a little worried about the copy up here. How are the children doing? People have, uh, there's something called banner blindness. It's, it's definitely true on websites where we've just learned how to not see ad banners when we're trying to read the New York Times. And, and I wonder if this is going to catch people's eye. It's one of the reasons I'm not in love with high graphic design um, because, because you, you can um, not necessarily get people's eyes to where you want them. I like the sidebar too. I would like it better on a separate piece of paper, but that may just be me. Um, those are the only other things I picked up. The story is so powerful. Leah's right. It's the centerpiece. And so sad. Yeah. That story is your centerpiece. I think that's all I got. Yeah. You know, I, again, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm with Mark, you know, it's, I might try to take this into a less highly designed format um, and really make the focus on um, the, the story of Khalif and that you're the voice for, you know, for, you know, teenagers like him who just, who, who don't have one. So, but man, did you make the case one. for support? Yeah, you sure did. So all the boxes get checked and, um, who knows? Maybe if you tested highly designed against low design, high design would win. In general, it doesn't. When most organizations spend the money to test, low design does tend to win, particularly when people are giving five hundred, a thousand, a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. They're looking for personal contact. Aaliyah, I can't see the screen because I just see what you guys see, I'm wondering if any questions have come in. And Polani, if you want to take the screen back, that would be great. Yep, we haven't had any additional questions. Now, guys, is the time, you know, now that you've seen, you know, us give feedback to others and seen some other letters. Um, oh, you're welcome, Rachel. That was such a great letter. Thank you for, for participating. Um, but for others, you know, just shoot. Ask away. Um, and, and we'll stay here for a little bit. We know that Sometimes it takes a while for questions to percolate. Um, you know, and maybe while some are coming in, Mark and I can talk about some of the, the biggest um, uh, mistakes we see made in fundraising letters. Mark, what's one of your pet peeves in fundraising letters while we wait for some questions to come in? Too many we's and not enough you's. The donor wants to be the hero. The donor wants to be the hero. And most of the letters that we looked at, um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I, I was trying to look at the questions too. Most of the letters we looked at today did a really good job of that. Agreed. Um, Be Mary, better than some clients. Mary is asking, are the people who submitted letters okay with the rest of us using their ideas? Um, I would think that we probably need to figure out some way that we get, you know, uh, approvals. I mean, I like to say that I'm genius. Um, steals, <laughs> um, but um, Polani, what what are your thoughts about that? As far as how people should should go through proper channels, I can follow up with the folks who submitted things to me, and whenever I send out the recording, I'll give out an answer. Okay, awesome. Thank you. And and Stephanie. Um, we, we only put in one Kvel letter, but yours was a good candidate for Kvelling also. So let's get permission from you as well to share your letter from Texas. All right. We'll still wait for a few other questions um, to come in, and I'll tell you my um, pet peeve on letters. Um, I would say um, – it's too many math problems, too many statistics. Um, when I read lots of statistics, it's, it's really hard to, like I said, to anchor them against what is, is okay, what's normal, what's not. And so if you do use a statistic, make sure it's powerful enough to stand on its own um, and really shows the need and, and urgency. Uh, 
up. And we are not having any more questions. Maybe we'll wait. I'll, we'll do one more round of Mark pet peeves, and then we'll we'll cut it off if we haven't received any other questions. What are my pet peeves? These letters are so good; they're not popping to mind. I agree with you completely on stats. Um, sometimes a, an organization will get a little too enthusiastic about talking about its inner workings instead of the why. It's, it's one of the reasons why the letter that had the bullet points of what your money will do was so powerful because it was all about the why. It was all about the outcomes. It was all about these children will be fed. These children will be will get the medical care they need instead of this department will be funded or we'll have four more researchers working. Um, yeah. Yeah. Rachel just um, uh, asked a question. How about pairing direct mail with e-appeals? Do's and don'ts. Um, I will um, grab this one, and then Jeanette has a great uh, question after that. Um, do um, pair your direct mail with your e-appeals. I have tested pre-e-appeals and post-e-appeals, and I have never come to a conclusive answer. So I think it is okay to either do an email appeal before your direct mail hits, and you can say, I have just sent you a letter in the mail, or you can do an e-appeal after your direct mail hits and say, um, you should have received a letter from us in the mail. Um, I would have the email content be very similar to what is in the direct mail, only shorter, um, and really just have them echo each other, right? Because that's the that's the power of it is making sure that um, you know people are you're cutting through the clutter. So if people saw your email and then they go to their mailbox and see your letter, they're more likely to pay attention to the fact that you sent them something. Um, I definitely like Michelle in North Carolina's approach, that she's doing Be the Voice across all of her um, uh, communications in December. So anything with direct mail is going to have Be the Voice on it, and anything on email is going to have Be the Voice. Um, so it brings, like, this cohesive campaign umbrella together. Um, so, you know, people know that it's coming from NC Child and that it's their Be the Voice campaign. Um, yeah, I think that that's really, those are really my do's and don'ts. Can I share a net? That? Yeah. yeah. Um, email um, brings, I don't disagree with any of that. Email um, usually comes with images. And one of the things we see in email, one of my huge pet peeves with email is when the image contradicts the story. So you've got this incredibly sad story of this kid who was imprisoned at Rikers and then commits suicide. And this is not a good example because the picture didn't, didn't disagree, but, but I've seen organizations have a story that sad and then have a smiling kid, and it creates real um, cognitive dissonance. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. I kind of felt like that a little bit with the um, – with the image that was on Rachel's letter, um, it, because the story was so powerfully sad, and the image in that banner was a little bit, um, you know, it, it, you had someone who looked kind of middle class with, um, you know, a, a black teenager with, um, you know, then there were some white girls in, in the back. It just, it, it didn't feel like it connected directly to the story that I was reading. So I, I, I think that that's a good, a good call, Mark. Um, and then just mm. the, last, the last question we have here, are what are your feelings about giveaways? I recently got a pair of socks. So anyone who has listened to an NPR drive knows about premiums. <laughs> and I like to say that once somebody's a premium donor, they will always be a premium donor. Mark and I have done a ton of research on behavioral economics, which is sort of the science behind marketing persuasion, the science behind human behavior and why we do things that we do. And once you shift someone into a market frame of mind, they really get out of their social norm frame of mind. And when you get someone into a premium, like you're going to get this calendar or you're going to get this um, wall clock or you're going to get this pair of socks, you move people out of giving because they're mission-driven into because they are transactional-oriented. So, you know, some of my clients do use premiums because 
they're like, hey, at least we get new donors on the file, but the quality of those donors is going to be less. So for you guys who are building your individual donor program, I wouldn't do premiums because why get yourself in that in that, you know, turmoil as you're starting. Mm. You might as well find those mission-driven people and not sort of get yourself in a bind about trying to keep premium donors when they don't really care about what you do. What she said. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that this was a helpful um, webinar. Sometimes it's really um, good just to see um, other people's letters get um, critiques, and uh, we wish you all lots of fun writing time. And a successful year end. Yeah. Melanie, back to you. All right, thank you. Oh, I guess we're done. Bye, everybody.